So this unit is leaking water everywhere. Drain pan's not plugged up. We've had a history of a refrigerant leak on the first stage of this guy. So we're gonna check everything out right now. So far the blower assembly, or the air handler has water signs in it, but the drain pan's not full. So we're gonna do a analysis on this unit, check the refrigerant charge, and then possibly do a leak check. This one's a tall one, because it's only accessible by a 16 foot ladder. It's a big boy. She is. Okay, so this unit has a VFD tucked back inside there. It's basically a two speed blower. What I found right now was that this unit was not wired up for two speeds. So the VFD was never speeding up to 100%. So there's some funky wiring going on here. I'd like to correct this, but we'll have to talk to them. For now, I made a temporary fix. What happened was the original installers never landed the wires on the terminal block. So I figured out which one was which. If you look up here, we've got four wires, and if you look at the schematic, basically this is common, this is G. That's signal to turn the fan on, but that turns it on on low speed. And then you have it wired up to Y2, and you have it wired up to W1 because this is a heat pump. So they have it wired up to W1 because during heating, you want this fan running at 100%. And during cooling, you want the indoor fan running at 100% when the second stage comes on. So they didn't have the second stage wired up. They had the heating wired up, but not the second stage for the cooling. And we've got a water leak problem here. So I temporarily repaired it by running a jumper from G to Y2, as you can see right there. And now it powers at 100% when the blower motor turns on until we can get in here and really troubleshoot this wiring and figure out what's up. But that's a major issue and this is a major installing issue that someone never corrected correctly. They just never landed the wires is what they didn't do. This particular location is located on top of a shopping mall. If you don't have the joys of working on shopping malls yet I don't ever wish that on anybody in your family or yourself because they're fun to say the least. Usually a game of uh, playing with security, them losing your insurance paperwork, them telling you they unlocked a door that they didn't, all kinds of fun stuff like that. So we'll see if we get lucky right now. Oh, looks like we're lucky. But, we're going up there. I brought the bare minimum of tools that I thought I would need. There's times that you like a cage on your ladder, but then when you carry a tool backpack, that cage sucks. Luckily, I didn't bring my backpack right now. So, all the way up there. Not too bad, we'll see at the top. And our equipment's all the way at the other end of the roof. We share the roof with a, uh, a movie theater and two or three other restaurants. This restaurant actually isn't part of the actual shopping mall. It's a building they added about seven years ago. So I guess it could be worse. When I'm doing uh, work like this where all that I'm gonna do today is just put some refrigerant in this unit and that's it. We're gonna come back, we're gonna quote everything. 
So I usually won't bring my big tool backpack. I got my small little Vito bag. I believe this is, I think it's the MB2, I think. Don't quote me on that. But it's the tall meter bag, so I'm pretty sure that's the MB2. And then I have one of these uh, lug jugger straps for carrying refrigerant, and I'll just strap it to it. Uh, pretty sure you can get all that stuff at True Tech Tools, I believe. That's where I think I got it all. So we're just gonna top off the charge. So we've got an 80 degree liquid line temp and 293 for our liquid pressure. So if we go to 293, that puts us like right about here. And then we go to about 80, that puts, that actually puts us right on the line. So we're actually look like we're about perfect. So even though it's leaking, it hasn't leaked out enough to be low yet is what it looks like. So we're gonna check the other circuit too. Okay, so this is my other circuit. Look at my liquid line temperature about 80 degrees 79 and my liquid line pressure is 296 call it 300 so if we go to our chart right here I have a mark right here at about the 300 mark and then if you take 79 over here and follow it over puts us about right on the right on the curve so we don't need to add gas to either circuit So I'm all finished up up here. I'm taking my gauges off. It's always important that you purge the refrigerant back into the system. Obviously, if you don't already know, disconnect the high side, valve it off, take it off, you know, open up the high side, purge it into the low side, and basically let the system suck up as much as it can. Another really important tip is our service caps. Always inspect your service caps to make sure they have the rubber O-rings inside of them. Those rubber O-rings will cause you a headache later. I got everything all disconnected and I'm just kind of surveying what I'm going to need to repair this leak. You always want to look at the big picture. More than likely I'm going to be able to pump the refrigerant down into this condenser. Uh, but I also in my head want to keep in mind how much refrigerant I think that this system has. Um, I could calculate it, I could make an estimation by measuring the liquid line. I really don't know though, um, I could take... Yeah, you, you could figure it out by doing some math, but I really don't know. I'm going to estimate that this system takes about 40 pounds in each stage. Maybe 30 pounds, somewhere in there. So what I'm going to do, uh, I see that I need a dryer. It's a 16-4 sweat. So we'll bring one of those by flow. And then I'll go ahead in my quote and include a recovery charge. Make sure it's for a 50-pound tank because we can get 30, 40 pounds in there or something like that. Um, so just in case I can't pump it all down into the condenser, I can have a recovery tank handy. Uh, then we'll fix the leak. The leak's on the second stage equalizer line. Um, that's pretty much it. That's all we're gonna need for this. I'll kind of estimate that in my quote that it's gonna take 10 pounds of gas, but it probably won't. So, you know, I'll just let them know. And that's pretty much it. So we'll get a quote to them and then see what they say. So on that one, to recap, we had a service call and a water leak coming from the fan coil unit for a split system heat pump. This is a 15 ton system. Um, when I got there, the drain pan had a little standing water in it, so we blew out the drain just to be safe. But I was looking at the water on the, the, the filters were at a slant, so it's a slanted coil. So I was looking at the water uh, pattern because water had been dripping on the filters and it was indicating to me that it was actually dripping off the coil not necessarily just overflowing the drain pan so I think we had a couple problems there it's important that you don't just have tunnel vision find a plugged up drain move on I dug into it a little bit deeper and what I actually found was that the indoor fan was never ramping up to a hundred percent so that has a VFD, so it's a two-speed fan. It's this, you know, Title 24 efficiency stuff here in California that we do. I'm sure, I think it's just getting everywhere, to be honest with you, but it's an energy efficiency thing. They're running the indoor fan on a low speed when just the first stage is calling, and they're running it on a high speed when the second stage calls. Well, this one was never running on high speed. So the second stage would start calling, 
and it would start getting cold on the coil, but we weren't getting enough airflow. So more than likely it would start frosting up or condensating a lot and it wouldn't uh, drain correctly. And it started dripping down into the, the, the bottom of the fan coil unit and dripping over the customers. So I corrected that problem, but then previously I had topped off the charge on this probably about a month or two ago and they never had me come back out and do a leak check. So while I was in there, I did a leak check and I found that leak of which I had topped off the charge the last time for. So I located the leak, went upstairs to top off the charge again and it actually hasn't even leaked out enough. So I didn't have to add any gas at this time, but now I can give them an official quote to repair the leak and get the unit operational. And then I'm also, I did a temporary fix on the electrical. I really don't like the way that it was set up. As if you saw in the video, they never landed the wires on the terminals. They were just basically wire nutted. And um, I just don't like the way that it was. I did a temporary fix by running power from G over to Y2 on the terminal strip because that's the way that that air handler knows that it's calling for second stage is when Y2 gets energized, there's a wire that runs to the VFD drive and it just looks for a 24 volt signal. When it gets that 24 volt signal, it ramps the VFD to 100. So anyways, I just did a jumper wire from G to Y2, so that way it's gonna run full speed 24 seven, no ramping down at this time. And I would like to permanently fix it, but even if they didn't approve the fix, it would be fine running on high speed. It just wouldn't as be as efficient essentially. So we'll submit the quotes and we'll see what happens, all right?